Hey guys, welcome back. So I've gotten a bunch of questions about uh, a technique that I used in a couple tutorials, and that is referencing a operator with a global op shortcut, um, which is pretty healthy, pretty handy functionality to have. So I'm gonna do a quick video uh, just to go through what that technique is and how I use it in my workflow. Now, right now we just have a totally open, fresh touch designer project. I'm sure everybody's seen this. A ton. Um, so what we have is a base called local. If we jump inside that, we can see that there's some variables. Uh, these look like local variables. There's a master beat, and then we have some MIDI maps. Then we have a window comp uh, that is called perform. There's nothing inside of that, uh, but this is what you use to actually output your project to screens. Um, and then obviously our project container, which is where we do most of our work. So before I go any further, I'm gonna note that I have a template startup file that I use for pretty much everything. Um, so a lot of what I'm, or pretty much everything I'm about to talk about, I have uh, implemented in that startup file. So all of this just happens when I open up a new project. I can share that startup file for Patreons, um, or sorry, for Patreons on Patreon, uh, so that that's available to those of you who are on Patreon. Um, but for those of you who aren't, just know that you'll potentially want to do this uh, in a startup file because, frankly, a lot of the benefit is just having it always exist, which we'll see in a second. So I'm going to delete that perform uh, window comp because we don't need it. I'm going to leave this local up here. If you try and delete it, you get an error. Um, it's necessary for execution. It can't be modified. So I'm just going to leave this here and jump into our project. Now, I am going to make a very simple project where I'm going to have a base and a container. My base, I'm going to actually rename local. And my container, I will name generative. Actually, I'm just going to name it gen and jump inside. And in here, we'll do something very easy, like maybe a quick feedback loop. Um, and then the point of this is going to be purely for just to give us something that we can pulse. Uh, so <clears throat> not going to be too crazy here. I'm just going to really quickly make this dynamic. I guess I should have probably had a null there for best practice. I'll drop a filter in, make the filter width 0.2, and then make the frequent or the period of my noise much higher. Finally, I'll drop the circle down to a much smaller radius. Then we'll drop a feedback, a add, wire this in. I'll end for another null and then drop the add on the feedback. And we'll see, boom. We have a super simple feedback network. Um, so if we wanted to pulse this feedback then, what we would do is something like a keyboard in, maybe put a null here, and then drag this keyboard in to my feedback chop like this. And now when I press one, boom, my feedback resets. This is something I think everybody's very, very used to. Um, now, where this becomes problematic is, let's say, okay, we will whoops, drop this down to a component. I'll grab this feedback pulse. I'll put it on my component. Collapse selected. Make a bunch of different components, right? Don't. 
will. And why is that not working? Got it. That's what I should have done. Um, okay, so then we can see that our feedback is now working as expected. Um, okay, so if I have another base, we see the K1 is also in here. And so if I, for whatever reason, get rid of this and press K1, um, my feedback in this comp isn't pulsing. And it gets even more complex if I do have a pulse working in this component, but maybe I have another component here that I can, you know, add an in and an out, and then we can wire one feedback through another feedback. And now, if I open up my parent parameters and pulse, we can see that our first feedback is pulsing, but not our second feedback. And so we would either have to drop in here and then associate this with our second parent feedback to be able to pulse both of them with one button, or drop this K1 onto this feedback and then maybe like parameterize the feedback here. Um, something like this, I suppose we could do, or this, but I find all of those are, are pretty annoying. And as you have products that have multi or sorry, projects that have multiple levels of hierarchy and tons of different pulses, maybe it's feedback pulsing, maybe we're pulsing um, count operators, uh, count chops that we're pulsing, right? So if you have a bunch of things and you reset, then you pulse your count, um, pulse speeds, pulse simulations, whatever. The point is, I like to have one single source of truth pulsing event that I will wire to every single thing in my project that could ever need to be pulsed. And that will allow me to basically just press key one time and know that everything in my entire project is going to be pulsed. So the way that I do that is by using this uh, local op. I'm going to actually put my keyboard in here add a null, customize my parent component. I'm going to add a parameter called pulse. And then we can see that here. And the last thing I'm going to do is go to common and under global op shortcut, I'm going to just change that to expression and type me.name. Now, this global op shortcut is set to local for this parameter. I understand that there is also a local comp at the parent level. Um, I have never run into problems having my own project-based local comp, and I like calling it local because it makes sense to me, but you can obviously call this anything, config, whatever you like. Um, so just a disclaimer on the naming. So the cool thing about global op shortcuts is that we can go into a very remote place of the network, right? I'll just add a couple more, like a base and then another base and then just another base, maybe a container to give ourselves some hierarchy. And then if we take a feedback, and just add like before. Now this will probably go to white, but that's fine. Um, so I'm really deep in my network, right? I'm like six, seven different um, kind of nodes away from my local component, but I can still get to it by referencing the global operator shortcut. So for my reset pulse here, I can say op dot local dot. Well, if I just do op dot local, um, you can see if I use a text stat with just something simple like debug op dot local, 
and then I open up the text port with Alt T and then I run my text app, we can see that we're printing out what our op.local object is. And it's telling us that this is a base comp with a path of project one local. And that, if we go back to project one and local, is exactly where we wanted it to be. So the whole way down here, we're able to reference that component that's pretty far away with just a simple click, or sorry, a simple one line reference. This is super handy for many reasons. Um, but the one that I use the most is by using, since now we have a parameter object, we can just call the par um, of that object. And then we want our pulse parameter. And then you always just put eval on the end of the any parameter that you're reading the value from so that you get the most recent evaluated value for that parameter. Now, when I hit uh, one on the keyboard, if I go the whole way up to my local, you can see the K1 is being hit. All I'm gonna have to do is open my parent parameters. And then I'm just gonna drop this K1 right onto that parameter. So if I have a parameter chop and we press one, we can see that our pulse parameter is firing. And then if I go back down to our component here, we can see that when I press one on my keyboard, uh, which you can see here, when I press one, we are actually pulsing this feedback even though it's really far away. So that's super handy. Um, you know, if, for example, I also wanted every, I don't know, five clicks or something, we could loop this from zero to five, but maybe we want the counter to reset every time we pulse. And then, I don't know, we can change the opacity of our final. So as we're pressing the keys, we're increasing the opacity of our final thing here. Not the coolest effect out there. But the point being, um, if I change this to K2, and change this to a two, then we can see that as I press two, my opacity goes up. And as I press one, I'm pulsing. And if I also change this count reset to op.local.par.pulse.eval, uh, if I press one, that count also resets. So now I know that whenever I'm pressing one, everything in my entire project, no matter how deep it is, where it's at, or how far it is from my local comp, is actually being uh, reset. So just to close it out, if I did have a component like this, I would just set this reset pulse to op.local.par.pulse.eval. And when I save this tox in my library just to reuse next time, um, I would just save it with this right in there so that when I drop it into one of my own projects, uh, it's just gonna be functioning immediately. And then I'm able to just start you know, using one as my global reset and it works every time. So pretty fast one. Hopefully that was clear and helpful to everybody. Like I said, I'll drop the, the startup file itself in the Patreon description. And uh, yeah, hopefully this is helpful and answers some questions. And then uh, just to close, as always, thank you to everyone who has supported me on Patreon. Uh, the reason that I'm able to do these is because of that support. And so it really means a ton. Um, if you like the tutorials and are getting some good value and information, please check it out and follow me there. Uh, so with that, I will talk to everyone next time.